Welcome students. Today we are going to see silicon control rectifier. Yeah, silicon control rectifier. It is one of the power semiconductor device and we call that as thyristor. It is a four layer three junction semiconductor device used to control high voltage and high current. It is mostly used in industries and we use this device for the switching purpose. This is the symbol of silicon control rectifier. It has three terminals, anode, cathode and gate. Coming to its physical diagram and equivalent circuit, we can see that the physical diagram, it is an uh, PNPN structure. It is now this figure, which is a NPN and PNP transistors connected back to back. And this is the figure structure of that, right? And this is a symbolic view of it. Yeah, now we see the SCR structure. SCR structure is a four layer. So P type material, N type material and P type and N type. So four layers of uh, semiconductor materials we have. You can see that. Okay. So here it has three junctions. So first P to N, it is first junction. N to P is the second junction and P to N is the third junction. So it is a three, four layers, three junction. And you can see the gate, the gate which is connected, which is near to the cathode. So we have three terminals, anode, cathode and gate. Gate is connected very much near to the cathode structure. Coming to its uh, SCR internal structure, we can see. So this is the internal structure. We have P, N, P, N. And we can see that the cathode which we connect, the N type is heavily doped. Okay, and the anode which we are connecting to the p-type is lightly doped compared with the other uh, n-type material. And this we call that as a cross-section of p and p n structure of silicon control rectifier. Now coming to the connection in the circuitry, how to connect a silicon rectifier in a circuit. Now we can see that the p-type material will be connected to the anode of the battery and the n-type material will be connected to the cathode of the battery. Now this is a structure which we use. Now this is a circuit diagram of SCR which we use to connect so that we can use that SCR as a switching device. Okay, we can see here that the SCR anode is connected via a rheostat to the positive terminal of the battery and the cathode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the gate is connected by a switch to a small gate voltage. Yeah, now we see the working of silicon control rectifier. Silicon control rectifier, we can make that as a forward bias and the reverse bias. And when we forward bias the silicon rectifier, we can make that working as a rectifying unit or else it will be in the off position. So here it has been written, please you can read it. Silicon rectifier, silicon control rectifier start conducting when it is in forward bias. For this purpose, cat cathode terminal should be at the negative potential and the anode should be at the positive. Okay, and very important point is that the gate pin has to be connected with a clock pulse or with a very less voltage supply. And coming to the modes of SCR, there are three modes of uh, silicon control rectifier. The first one is your forward blocking mode. Second one is forward conduction mode and the reverse blocking mode. So forward blocking mode, forward conduction mode and reverse blocking mode. Now we can see the operation of SCR. Now if we can see the first, the first diagram, it is the just the uh, structure of SCR and the second diagram B, the second B, uh, figure B, it shows the forward biasing. Now we can see here forward biasing that is the PN and PN, the P type material is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and N type is connected to the negative terminal of the battery here. Okay, so see the junctions here when it is connected when it is in the forward bias the first pn junction will be forward bias and then next np junction will be reverse bias and the next pn junction will be as forward bias and the next mode that is 
the reverse that is the reverse blocking mode if you can see right reverse blocking mode here we are going to connect the reverse biasing of it in the reverse biasing where the p terminal the p type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the n type material is connected to the positive terminal of the battery right and one important thing is that the first two modes the forward blocking mode and the forward conduction mode will happen in the forward biasing and the last one the second one the reverse blocking mode will ha will happen when the scr is connected in the reverse bias condition now we see how the scr can be made in an on position now we can see here the anode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery here that is the p type is connected to the anode terminal of the battery and the n type is connected to the cathode of the battery okay and then the gate is connected to the positive terminal of the battery now in this if this is a connection being made to the scr it will be in the on condition the only the logic is that the gate should be given a small potential now coming to the next operation that is <coughs> the forward blocking of scr in the forward blocking of scr anode cathode voltage is less than the forward breakover voltage such that scr will not allow the flow of current through it now I will be clear to it. The operation of SCR will be clear by seeing its uh, catastic curve. Now, if we can observe this particular catastic curve, now we are maintaining the gate voltage at a zero potential. When the gate voltage is at po zero potential, now if you can see the anode voltage which we supply, whenever we supply the anode voltage, this first mode will exist that is the forward blocking mode in the forward blocking mode the current will not move from the p type material to the n type material and there will be flow of current and that will be the leakage current okay now in order to make in on state we have to increase the gate potential and then it will be the current will be moving very faster and then it will be drastically increasing this catastic curve, this catastic curve shows with the various gate voltages. Now, with the various gate voltages or the gate currents, now we have the catastic curve. Now, you can see below a certain value where the SCR is not conducting. This is your forward blocking. And after a particular block over stage, what happens is that the, the current of the SCR will drastically increase right and up to an holding point ih right and then the current will drastically increase now this curve shows the values of three different gate currents that means in turn it is as voltage if you are increasing the voltage the current will increase so we take the consideration of the gate current and by which we can trigger this scr in the reverse blocking mode in the next mode reverse blocking mode we can see this will be just like acting like an pn junction diode where it will be having the reverse current uh, reverse leakage current and it will be having the breakdown point where you have the avalanche breakdown carries out okay next going to the silicon as a silicon control rectifier as a rectifying unit where it can able to rectify the sinusoidal waveform to the pulse that is half waves okay it's an half wave rectifier and similarly you can have as a full wave rectifier here yeah, next coming to the applications of silicon control rectifier we can use this silicon control rectifier in terms of battery charging regulator temperature control the circuit and emergency lightning system so this is about the complete scr so i just recall scr is a three terminal device having anode cathode and gate terminal it has four layers right it is used for switching networks okay and it has two modes sorry three modes the first two modes the forward blocking mode and the conduction mode are in the first half of that is the first half and the reverse blocking mode will be the third one okay the first two modes will exist in the forward biasing and the last mode will exist in the reverse biasing right so thank you hope you enjoyed the lecture thank you